Hey guys, Dr. Daphne Lim, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about a compound which has been prescribed uh, very commonly by many dermatologists throughout the world. It's called hydroquinone. Uh, it's banned in certain countries, but I'll tell you why shortly. Um, but this compound has been with us for many, many years. Uh, it's banned in countries, for example, in South Africa, in Japan, and certain parts of Europe. In Australia, it is readily available. However, the maximum concentration is uh, 2%. So the reason for the ban is that there are some papers, early papers in rat models or murine models, which show there's an increased risk of a hepatic carcinoma, a cancer of the liver, as well as um, blood cancers, including leukemia in rats. Uh, that dose is huge, um, and I understand the concerns, but I think um, it's been shown largely to be uh, safe. It is still not indicated uh, in pregnancy and lactation. So. In the context of skin, I'll go through the pros and the cons of hydroquinone. So the vast majority of dermatologists, at least in Australia, uh, will regulate its use. We'll use it very cautiously. We'll use it for a short period of time uh, and we'll titrate the dose. Now let's talk about the use. So hydroquinone uh, has been used for many years to treat disorders of pigmentation. So in particular, things like uh, melasma, and second most common is uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So PIH is very common. It's secondary to um, things like inflammation from most commonly acne. It can also be due to inflammatory conditions such as uh, eczema and things like lupus and lichen planus and ashy dermatosis and a whole lot of other medical conditions. So the main use in Australia, at least the main use with which I use HQ is uh, the treatment of melasma. Now, if you read, um, I guess, the scientific literature and uh, understand that it is still the most potent compound uh, to uh, inhibit the enzyme or tyrosinase. So it's a tyrosinase inhibitor. So it inhibits the enzyme that produces melanin or pigment. So even in this day and age of um, lots of things, for example, like cystamine, arbutin, uh, licorice root extract, uh, botanicals, bearberries, blueberries, uh, and a whole heap of others out there. Even if you combine all of those, uh, it's still not as good as hydroquinone. So I'm not a proponent for HQ. You, like, like, like everyone says, with power comes responsibility. So with hydroquinone, we need to be very cautious on its use. The biggest concern uh, as a dermatologist is basically uh, twofold. First of all, irritant dermatitis. So irritant contact dermatitis is very different from allergic contact dermatitis. Irritant contact dermatitis is, um, it, everyone gets it. It just depends on the concentration and your innate skin sensitivities. So it's not that um, you know people are immune to irritant contact. It just depends on the concentration. It depends on the application, depends on your skin barrier, and also uh, depends on your innate, in other words, your genetic susceptibility to certain compounds, which is uh, not different from an allergy. So the biggest concern with HQ uh, for dermatologists is irritant contact dermatitis. So irritant contact dermatitis occurs when uh, you use the um, uh, ingredient, whether it be hydroquinone, retinol, retinoic acid, and your skin reacts. Um, it's not an immune mediated uh, reaction, it's a localized reaction. So we all know that hydroquinone, once you increase the concentration from something like a 2%, um, and you go up to something like a 5%, 6%, 8%, you're gonna increase uh, the irritant potential of that uh, ingredient. So the way to use it is um, you wanna use it at night, you wanna be very, very accurate where you use it. If you, if you have spillover to your normal skin, uh, you may get depigmentation of that area. Uh, and that looks even worse because now instead of having uh, hyperpigmentation and normal skin, you might have hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation together with normal skin. So you've gotta be very accurate. You gotta apply it with a cotton tip uh, you, want to, you might want to do it after a bath, shower, washing your face. Do it about an hour or two before going to bed because you don't want to smudge it around your um, pillow because that can go to other areas of your face. If you have any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, flaking, it's really easy. Use half of it. So you can have a pea size, a half a pea size drop, mix another uh, half pea size drop or pea size drop. One to one dilution with your bland moisturizer and active hydroquinone. So you've turned that from a 5%, for example. Uh, and, and blend it with half-half, uh, and you've turned it to a 2.5%. It's, um, it's not rocket science, it's not, uh, also it's not accurate, but at least you've diluted it, yeah? 
So you want to get the concentration between two to three percent, less than five percent. If you do have any um, untowards reactions, for example, uh, you can also use a moisturizer before and you can moisturize after. So these are little ways uh, you can uh, um, apply the hydroquinone with less irritation. And if you do have any irritation, just skip the next night. So it's pretty easy. So that's the first thing we're worried about is the uh, irritant potential. Now, the second thing we're worried about is ochronosis. So exogenous ochronosis, different from endogenous ochronosis. Ochronosis occurs in tachyphylaxis. So basically it's big words for uh, paradoxical pigmentation and um, when the uh, topical stops working, tachyphylaxis, yeah? So we, uh, most dermatologists like to give you a, uh, an on period and the on period may be anywhere between eight weeks to something like six months, uh, but you need an off period. So as a general guide, every month that you're on it, a minimum of one week off. Um, your dermatologist may differ. Uh, I follow what's in the literature and um, I rarely take it past six months. Uh, four months, five months is, is a good period. Uh, and then cease it for between four to eight weeks and then reuse. Um, Long-term implications, uh, and this is pretty serious, is ochronosis, exogenous ochronosis. In other words, uh, the area becomes uh, darker. Uh, so instead of actually lightening up, uh, it darkens. And it's due to dermal pigmentation, which is much harder to treat. So you get these little um, dots where the um, area of pigmentation is, and we refer that to as the caviar seed or the, or the caviar egg sign, which are basically little million-like dots uh, on the background of, um, of uh, gray dots, yeah? And there are dermatoscopic findings and also histological findings, which your dermatologist can tell you about. So those are the two main issues. Now, allergies, allergies to HQ are very rare. So we're not talking about irritant dermatologist where you put it on and suddenly you go red. We're talking about allergies. So allergy is, you only need a small amount. So an allergy is basically um, an immunological reaction. So it's not a localized reaction, it's immunological, which means you only need a small amount to spark off a reaction. Uh, that, like I said, is rare, but irritant contact dermatitis is common. So there are ways to test for um, an allergic contact dermatitis. You can do what's known as a rote, uh, repeat open application test. Um, use a tiny bit, uh, back of your ear, front of your ear, or even your inner arm uh, and, and see whether it reacts. Um, be guided by your dermatologist because patch testing can be useful for patients who, uh, who are allergic to it. So in the countries where um, hydroquinone is regulated, uh, there are other pigment inhibitors. Um, so there are many creams out there, many commercial creams, everything from uh, Meloderm, Melaraze, Melaraze, Melacream, to Lytera, Cystamine, and a whole heap of others. Now, the, uh, in, in Australia, um, we, all of those are over the counter, yeah? So uh, things, for example, let's go through a couple of pigment inhibitors, uh, you know, the ones that are H, I call it HQ free because they're free from hydroquinone. So things like arbutin. So alpha arbutin is manufactured in the lab. Beta arbutin is uh, found naturally. So arbutin actually gets converted to hydroquinone. In Australia, I think the uh, regulation is that up to 1%, 1% of um, alpha arbutin um, does not need to be labeled. I'm, I'm not too sure. The, I think above that, uh, it, I think there's restrictions. So and not, it may be due to the concerns that it gets converted to HQ. So you'll find arbutin in many uh, pigmentation uh, products or pigmentation treatment products, uh, both in Australia and throughout the world. And that's often combined with botanicals. And botanicals include things like um, licorice, licorice root extract, uh, various berries, including um, bearberry, blueberry, uh, together with soy and flavonoids. So these are all uh, natural ways to inhibit uh, the enzyme, the tyrosinase enzyme, which produces pigment. So other things which you can try or other things we can use, one of the simplest is um, ascorbic acid. So L-ascorbic acid. Um, the concerns with ascorbic acid is that much like uh, hydroquinone, it can be irritating because ascorbic acid is best. So the, uh, the best form of ascorbic acid is with a low pH. So somewhere in about 2.5 to about 3. So if you have sensitive skin, if you've exceeded your skin's threshold, if you have something like rosacea, 
uh, that might be a concern. So s start something like uh, a 10%, your formulations count here. Yeah? Um, so start with a good formulation, 10%, and if you can handle it, go up to 15, then 20% L-ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid is also a potent inhibitor of the enzyme um, tyrosinase. Uh, and it also uh, is a antioxidant. And in fact, in fact, this is true. Most good formulators, when we're formulating um, hydroquinone, so compounding chemists um, and dermatologists who write compounded scripts, I certainly do, uh, and I often add ascorbic acid. So a very low concentration of ascorbic acid, maybe one to 3%. But the reason why we add ascorbic acid even to the hydroquinone and depigmenting creams is that because it acts as an oxidizing agent. So in other words, um, when light, when heat, when um, when they degrade the, the chemical, when it increases the uh, free radicals within the actual bottle, uh, the vitamin C acts as a scavenger um, and it basically preserves the other ingredients. So that's another thing which ascorbic acid can be used for. Obviously, the, this good stuff like collagen building and things like that. So antioxidant roles are very important. So what else can you use if you don't have access to hydroquinone? Um, the other good one is azalic acid. So azalic acid is over the counter in most countries, including Australia. So you can buy yourself 5% all the way up to 20% um, azalic acid. And you can use that in the morning. So other pigment inhibitors uh, that you may find that may be useful, um, things which may not inhibit the pigment, but increase the actual epidermal turnover. In other words, your skin's turnover therefore uh, creating a chemical exfoliant. So things like salicylic acid. And most of the depigmenting creams, you might see a very low concentration of salicylic acid, somewhere between 0.5 to 2% salicylic acid. Uh, so if you're after something as an exfoliant, um, uh, look, salicylic acid can help. I prefer uh, AHA, so alpha hydroxy acids. So something like a glycolic or lactic acid preparation once again, it's a chemical exfoliant. They don't inhibit the enzyme which produces the pigment, but they can actually help the turnover. So in other words, instead of your um, melanin granule or your pigment granule turning over in something like um, you know, 25 to 28 days, by exfoliating, uh, you actually increase the turnover to something like 18 days. So that way you're speeding up the process of pigment clearance. Guys, I hope you find that uh, video useful. It's actually a very short one. Um, just expressing my views on hydroquinone. It's something which we come across all the time. Um, people, you know, when I see patients, they're expressing their concerns in regards to the safety of it. I thoroughly understand in regards to um, what's out there. Um, if you would want something to, get, to go natural, by all means do so, but understand um, that when you, when you pick and choose the other pigment inhibitors, it has not got the efficacy of which hydroquinone does. And I think if you use it sensibly under the guidance of a specialist um, and I guess keep it to short periods, in other words, for a finite time together with rotational therapy, uh, most dermatologists would view that as a safe treatment. Guys, thanks for that. Uh, if, thanks for your attention. Um, I'll see you uh, shortly. Bye for now.